Welcome back to the Love What's Real series. I'm Jen, chef and registered dietitian, and I have been your tour guide on this journey. So today we are actually hanging out at Old Europe Cheese Factory, and I'm here with Scott. Scott, thanks for having me. Well, we're so glad you could come. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Old Europe Cheese. I want to know what kind of cheese you make. I want to know the history. Let me hear it. Our parent company is from Spain. It's Rennie Pico. They wanted to create a presence here in the United States. Why do you think they chose Michigan? What, what makes this cheese so special? It's the milk. Yeah. It is that wonderful Michigan milk. I need to see this happen in person. I've personally never seen cheese be made before, so I think I have the best tour guide to do it. So let's go take a look. All right, great. right now inside of Old Europe? This is the receiving bay. Okay. In here, there are anywhere from three to four to five trucks a day will come in. They are the big milk tankers. They'll come directly from the farm. The milk will be taken out. It will go through the pasteurizer into our silos. We have approximately about 320,000 pounds of milk a day is processed here. We'll do that. That is a lot of milk. Yes. Yeah, and we were just actually at the Crandall farm, so I'm sure we're seeing that being shipped in here too. This looks like the fun part. I think we're making some cheese here. Yes. Walk me through that. This is the, the brie production. What we have here is there are two 6,000 liter vats. Each one will produce about 2,000 pounds of cheese. Wow. The cultures are the, made, the most important part of cheese making. The, Cultures are what develop the flavor. They develop the ripening process of the cheese. So that's what you're adding to the milk to get the cheese. Right, the milk is right. pumped in here. The cultures are added. It pumps from out of the vat, comes down through here, goes into the tipper. That tipper is actually pumping the curd and whey. The whey will drain out of the bottom and then the cheese is formed in those molds and that's what produces the cheese. This is known as the hot room. In this room, the cheese has just come from the vats. When that pH reaches a certain level, depending on the type of cheese, then we will move it from this room into the next room, which where the acidification process will stop. Okay, so that whole process is just the cheese becoming more acidic and kind of sticking together a little bit more. Right, and the uh, biological action is starting, and we want to stop that biological action at that point. In this room, what happens is we stop the acidification of the cheese, the, ri the ripening, we lower the temperature. When it reaches a, a, the specific pH that we want for it, the cheese is then de demolded. The cheese will stay in here for anywhere from 12 to 18 hours. Okay, so not too long either on this process. No. Okay. The brie will, after it's been demolded and put on the racks, yeah. it comes in here, goes into these brine, it's submerged into the brine. The brine is filtered continuously. It stays in here for a specific amount of time. The salt will get onto the surface of the cheese. And as the cheese ripens, that salt will migrate to the center. The, that will give the flavor. That's flavor, yes. Yeah. So it's just like when you're brining that Thanksgiving turkey, Absolutely. we're brining our cheese. Absolutely. That's really neat. It looks like our cheese is kind of hanging out here, getting some of the excess brine off. And I noticed there's a little sliver out of this one. So is that for me later? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. That is done by our quality assurance technicians. They will take a sample of every vat that we make. We send that off to an outside laboratory. All of our cheese is checked for pathogens. So where we are now is the curing room. In here, the cheese, after it comes out of the brine, after it's weighed, it comes into this room. It will stay in here anywhere from seven to 10 days to 12 days. Larger the size, the more it takes to ripen. What happens in here is as the cheese grows during the, the week, it's actually a living organism. The white on the brie that you see when you buy it in the store is called flurry. That's what grows the, the, the rind, is okay. what we call it. So the rind will be on there, it grows. That is what's protecting the cheese. Okay. 
and inside the, the paste of the cheese will get softer and softer as it gets older. The white that's on there, many people wonder, the biggest question we're always asked is, do you eat that yes, or do you not? people ask me that all the time. And it's a matter of preference. Okay. Um, it is perfectly safe to eat. Yeah. It is where the flavor is in the cheese, oh, actually. I, I prefer to eat it because I don't like food waste and right. I think it tastes delicious, so. Right. So that is, it's a, the integral part of making brie is the rind. So it looks like we're here in packaging now. So talk to me about this process. How, how does this cheese get from here into these packages? Well, we've just come from the curing rooms. The cheese has aged at the pro appropriate time. It's pretty much 90% automated at this okay. point. The cheese will go through, it will be wrapped, then goes down and will go into the boxes where it'll then go to the next step, which is the cooler. So where can our Michigan friends pick up some cheese near them? Do you have they, like specific grocery stores it goes to? We are in a lot of stores. Okay. Um, they, we sell to Meyer. we sell to the Spartan stores here in Michigan. Um, but we are in a lot, we're in most of the major chains in one form or another okay. with our cheese. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love What's Real. Thank you to Scott and Old Europe Cheese Factory for having us today. But we're gonna try this delicious brie now that we've gone through the entire process. So let's dive in, Scott. It's so creamy. I love it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>